You know, this, I'm a big fan of the French box easel. Uh, in the French box easel, all the paint fits, uh, all the brushes, all the knives fit. Uh, the palette actually fits into the easel. Even though this paint is wet, it's still very usable. People are always amazed, students are amazed that what I do is I shut the paint up inside of the easel and I close it and I can lift this easel up and nothing falls out. It's like everything that I need to paint is in this easel. So I'm kind of concerned why more students don't use the French box easel. Um, I will show you this about it is that when you, this is my palette that I've been using. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful old palette. I've probably been using this 10 years. Now, this is a brand new palette that, uh, that I cut out of plexiglass. And it comes with uh, this paper on it. And what you do is you, you measure the, the, the size it needs to be, and then this paper comes off. Good. What I tell people is the first 10 years you use this side and then the next 10 years you can use this side because it's just so, so uh, durable. Now what happens when you buy the uh, easel is usually one of these wooden things come in it and uh, it can be used but I much more prefer the brand new one. But uh, there's a problem. This one's too dark and this one's too light and this one's way too slick. So what happens is students with a brand new palette, they squeeze their paint out and if it's a little bit oily when they close their box it slides off and it creates a big mess. So what I do is this. I sort of prepare this for uh, for the paint not to slide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of paint and I'm going to put the yellow ochre where the yellow ochre goes and kind of just leave a bit there. So what I do is I, I take the paint, paint in, and this is going to be wasted paint, but I'm going to put a little bit here and kind of make it a bit rough and let this dry. Once this dries, the next time I put new paint on top of this, it will not slide. Uh, another problem with a brand new palette is this is just way too white. Let's take a look at what an old palette looks like. Notice that the place here where I'm mixing paint is has a patina. It's uh, dirty. It's kind of nasty. A lot of students I see spend a lot of time trying to keep this thing really, really white and it's, uh, it's just not useful. I, I'd much rather mix here than here. Uh, then you may be saying, well, I don't like the plastic one. I want to use this wooden one because it has a little it has a little hole in it that you can put your thumb in and we've all seen the guys in the movies, you know, they, they, get their, they get their brushes and they mix their paint on this and all this. Well, that's in the movies. Uh, rarely do we ever hold the palette like this. Just as you have to get a patina on this, you have to have a get a patina on this. So uh, this palette right here has a nice uh, patina already established on it, which I like mixing on. It would be sort of difficult mixing here or mixing here because this surface is too white, too light, and too slick, and this surface right here is too dark and kind of porous. So what I have to do is sort of uh, condition the palette, which is uh, developing a uh, patina. So when you have this brand new wooden palette, it would be a good idea to put some paint on it just paint that you're, you're, you're going to throw away. But put that on that and then not clean your palette, but just slowly build up some patina. Now what's going to happen on both these is that the, the good paint is going to be around here, placed around here and around here. And this is going to be your mixing area. What I want to do is sort of dirty this up for a bit to create a patina. Another layer and another layer and another layer and then eventually it's going to look like what a palette should look like, which is this. 